Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we'll be installing an ATS Aurora 3000 on a VP44 Dodge. Our number one selling truck platform for the ATS Aurora turbo lineups is the 98.5 to 02 Dodge VP44 trucks. Today we wanted to um, do an installation of an Aurora 3000 on an 01 Dodge. Really, really excited about this installation. We're gonna get you guys uh, data on this, what it does for the truck, drivability, and so on. Uh, but what we wanna start off with now is we have, we will link you inside of this video to our unboxing, and our unboxing will show you what parts and everything that come along with your Aurora, uh, your ATS Aurora purchase. And then uh, this is gonna be our installation video, how to install it uh, and everything, and then we'll back that up with some ride along and some, uh, some data um, after the fact. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be installing this Aurora 3000 uh, on, on this Dodge. I want to talk just a little bit about uh, setup and preliminary work that you're going to need to do um, to do this turbo swap. Now, I want to say a few words about this. I think this is one of the things on this platform trucks and the 12 valves, not to be excluded from this, that that um, that customers really don't take uh, a lot of advantage of is a turbo upgrade. A lot of guys want to do uh, fueling upgrades and then leave stock turbo on. Uh, and the the stock turbo is fine and it's in its stock form but um, when you start adding performance parts to your truck uh, a turbo upgrade is one of the nicest things that people just don't capitalize on for better drivability throttle response um, you know in these older trucks cleaning up smoke um, and, and and just just making the truck uh, just more enjoyable to drive. So, uh, you know, that's why we're excited about this video today, um, installing this ATS turbo. So, you know, these trucks, easy to do the turbo swap on, not that intimidating. Uh, we're gonna back this tur this video up with as well. Not only are we installing an Aurora 3000 from ATS on here, but we're also gonna be doing the ATS three-piece manifold, and then we're gonna be doing the ATS intake manifold uh, as well. So this will kind of be a video that's, that's broken out into three pieces which will link you back to all of the other uh, all the other videos inside of this but starting out with um, to do a turbo change on really any vehicle uh, the one thing that i like to do is i like to do this on a fresh oil change or change the oil you know before you do the oil change and i, I like to change it be right before we do the oil change especially if there's if you haven't had a failure with your charger you just upgrade chargers i like to do a quick oil change before i swap turbos out that way i've got oil pressure uh everything is already full and then when you know when we put the new turbo on we've got you know faster uh oil pressure to it of course you're going to want to pre-fill the charger as well but this truck just had an oil change it's only got i think 700 miles in the oil change the old oil is good and clean so we're going to go ahead and swap out so that's probably the first thing next in setup for this and on this platform you want to make sure on this side of the truck you're going to be working right around the alternator so you're going to get sparks and stuff there if you don't unhook your battery cable so make sure you unhook your battery cables um, that's always going to be a good thing for you we've al already taken the air intake out of, of here um, that's really simple to do unbolt it from the turbo and then just pull the air intake out stock box or whatever uh, you've seen us do that on, on several videos. And then another thing on these Dodge Turbos, where the feed line is, the feed lines get corrosive on both uh, the oil filter end and then the oil feed end as well. You can see a little bit of corrosion. And why that's important, when you go to loosen up the, uh, the fitting for the oil line, it wants to uh, stay in one piece so the whole oil line turns. So before I ever get started, what I do is I just take a little bit of WD-40, PB blaster, whatever, and then I'll soak these fittings before I get started. And hopefully that'll let them break free uh, when we go to uh, take that oil line off. A lot of guys like to change that oil line out, which is a great idea. Um, I, I just I, I'm not going to change it on this truck, but it, it is a great idea to do. It's cheap insurance uh, for your charger. So, all right. Now that we've got everything set up there, I'm going to kind of let Adam uh, get uh, the camera repositioned there where we're going to be in the side of this engine base. So for the next few shots, everything's going to be on the passenger side of the engine here, and then uh, we'll go ahead and start working on getting the turbo out. Now, in uh, to pull the turbo on these trucks, 
uh, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to pull the turbo separate from the manifold. Now you don't have to do that. You can totally leave the turbo attached and wrestle it all out in one shot if you want to. In fact, that's the way most guys do it. It's just a quick, fast, and easy way to do it. I want to show you how to remove the turbo from the manifold in case you guys don't want to do that. You're not changing out your manifold, which we suggest that you do, but if you don't, we want to be able to show you how to remove the turbo uh, from the manifold as a separate, separate unit. So that's what we're going to do now. I'd like to start out with my clamps. So I have a deep well 11 metric handy, and we're going to go ahead and loosen up the downpipe clamp. Now you'll notice this truck has got an aftermarket turbo on it, so it's already got an HX40 downpipe. If you have your stock downpipe on there, you just need to loosen up the two bolts at the ear clamps on the back of it, uh, and then that, that will have your downpipe loose from your stock turbo. And then the exhaust L or the uh, uh, the charge air elbow, you want to go ahead and loosen those clamps up as well. They're 11 metrics. All right. Now you'll go ahead and remove uh, that elbow because you'll have to reattach it to the new turbo. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that clamp all the way off there, and just get it out of the way. And I'm gonna leave it hanging down right there. We can leave it attached and um, mock your turbo up and see if it'll come back to it. If, it. if it will, you don't have to loosen that clamp. But if you do have to remove the elbow, uh, you'll wanna loosen that clamp. I'm gonna take the elbow out of it when we get the turbo out because I want to clean that elbow up too as well. All right, now, after you have done your clamps on your exhaust pipe and clamps on your 90 degree elbow on the discharge pipe, it's time to start working on your oil connections. All right, as we were talking on this oil feed line here on the turbos with the corrosion that you have right there, we like to shoot these with a little bit of PB Blaster, WD-40. But when you go to loosen this fitting, three quarter on the fitting that's actually in the turbo and then a 13 16 on top here. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to hold the bottom of the fitting, but turn this this AN fitting uh, independently of it. I used the wrong terminology there. Turn this, fit, this fitting independently of it and that way it breaks loose and uh, you can just un loosen up your oil line. Now, if that doesn't work and it's still the oil line still wanting to turn, you will have to come down here at this fitting, at the oil fitting, and then you will be 13 16 and then uh, 3 quarter, or I'm sorry, 11 16 on the top of it, hold the line here, turn it right there. So this is your oil feed line and we will go ahead and have that ready to go but we'll leave it on. There is a uh, O-ring right there, so just watch to make sure that you uh, are, are aware of where that is. I'll just leave the oil fitting on right now. Now, it's time to move to the oil drain, and I'm gonna start a light here for Adam and try not to blind him on the camera. And he's gonna come around here and I'm gonna point to the oil drain fittings. The oil drain on the turbo is right here. There's a very good shot of it. These are 10 metric bolts. So there's one here and there's one on the other side. Hard to get to. Uh, what I suggest to use is quarter inch drive ratchet with a small extension. It'll get you past your exhaust housing uh, and then you can loosen those bolts up. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and remove the 10, two 10 metric bolts for the oil drain. You will want to keep those uh, you will want to keep those bolts handy as we will be reusing them in our turbo installation. And this might be just a little bit too much extension, but we'll try it. I think Adam's got a shot of it right there. Yeah. We'll go ahead and loosen it up. If I can. Just 
just remove that bolt real quick. And then we'll slide over to the other side. Now the other side on the oil drain there has kind of got a little bit of a bend in it. So hopefully with this setup we can sneak past it. If not, you will have to get yourself a universal. Which is what I'm going to have to do. Actually, you know what? I'm going to shorten this throw up just a little bit. We'll go with just a shallow well socket. Let's see if that won't get us where we need to be. And it does. Perfect. Yeah. Adam and I are laughing about we've got a plastic stool here that we've had at the shop since Jesus was a baby. And uh, it's gotten so slick now that it, uh, it doesn't want to stay put on you. So you'll be over a truck fender doing something and the whole time the stool's running out on you. So we've got this bolt loosened up, really nothing to see here. We will just go ahead and remove it. As when we got the, the oil drain out, and I'll turn the light around where you can kind of see it a little bit better without it blinding at them. But when we got our oil drain lined down, we found Permatex. So whoever had this truck before me, this is my personal truck, decided it was a good idea when they installed that turbo to use Permatex on the oil drain. Don't do that. You get a gasket that comes with your ATS kit, nice fiber gasket. Don't use Permatex, don't be that guy. So in this instance right here, you know, normally I would tell you just let your oil drain line fall away, but we're gonna take a few minutes here and get the contaminants cleaned away from this just to keep something from falling down in your oil system, being sucked up, taking out your new turbo. So there's the oil drain line loose clean and away and we've got our oil feed away as well all right time to take the turbo mounting bolts off this is another spot for your wd-40 pv blaster whatever now on the stock manifold it has two bolts on your top and then it has two studs on the bottom so on the bottom we're just going to be loosening the nuts on the studs um, the six inch extension and a deep well socket are perfect here longer ratchet if you can get it because you know obviously you're going to have some rusted up uh, fasteners here so you're going to want a little bit of leverage on this so we're going to go ahead and i go went ahead and remove went ahead and loosen those up so we'll remove both of the nuts on these two studs Now you want to remove the bottom and leave the top on and reason being obviously is to let the turbo just hang and not be in any any danger of falling falling down falling into the engine bay hurting you or whatever so we won't be reusing these fasteners so if you get into a pinch here and you're working on yours one rounds and you got to get the uh, uh, you got to get the acetylene wrench out no problem this back one now I'm sure that the top bolts on this turbo are not going to be uh, probably the tur the bolts that actually were supposed to come into the come on the turbo so these sizes won't be exact but the nuts on this are going to be 15 metric um, flange nuts We're gonna switch over here and like I said again this isn't gonna be an exact size for me so this is gonna be a 16 metric on the top here and I think I had it measured out that the nut was 11 sixteenths so we're gonna start loosening this up this back um, bolt we've already gotten it out it was missing <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and loosen this and you'll start to see separation here on the manifold now the studs 
just depending on how the the turbo canters itself will kind of hang on those studs but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have my prop my wrench on the compressor cover there and then have a hand underneath of the turbo because again you don't want it to fall contact all right so now we're just going to work the turbo straight down free of the studs perfect there we go all right so now at this position in the video what we have done is we have installed our ats pulse flow manifold uh, on this Dodge and we will link you to that installation video here inside of this video But now it's time to reinstall the turbo the Aurora 3000 uh, on this truck now I had made mention uh, earlier in the video that this was an HX 40 downpipe style turbo I'm used to that. I, I really am. That was a mistake on my part. It's actually s 300 style now the um, Aurora 3000 comes with the downpipe for this model Dodge for this platform Dodge so this does come with the s 300 style flange downpipe so I'm going to have to cut my downpipe away uh, from this so here's how uh, we're going to attack this and hopefully this can be some help for you guys at home the downpipe that they send you is a non flared downpipe so this is going to go inside of a flared end on your exhaust system. So when you take your downpipe off, you wanna make sure that you take it apart at a flared end so that you can reinsert this downpipe. I hope it's that easy for you. More than likely, it's probably not gonna be. You're probably gonna have to cut your exhaust at some other point. Uh, if that is the case, give us a call. And what we suggest there to do is you, you'll wanna get a uh, piece of pipe that's probably flared on both ends will probably be easiest for you. Um, or if you need to make up a little bit more space, we've got a couple of different pipes uh, that we can get for you. Uh, then you can just cut it to length. Uh, you'll need an extra clamp with that application, but uh, a good easy way to do it is to, to do a muffler delete pipe from any of the kits as long as it's four inch that's flanged on both ends. Then you can cut it anywhere you really need to and make that pipe work. So that's what I'm going to do now. Time to cut the, uh, time to cut the uh, pipe away. Um, sawzall, easiest way to do this. We've got an air sawzall that I'm going to use here. So I'm going to cut my HX40, my old downpipe away. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mount the turbo. And the reason why we're gonna do that is we're gonna get our turbo mounted and then we're gonna just bring the downpipe to it. Uh, we can get a little bit more of a pre precise fit that way. Once you cut the downpipe loose, most of your exhaust is gonna be able to swing back and forth. So you get a lot of play on those back hangers uh, around your muffler. You can just push the exhaust back and pop it into the new, uh, new joints. A couple different ways that you can do it. Uh, we've got the parts to help you if you've got a, an exhaust that maybe somebody's welded for you or something like that. We can get you the parts you need to make you hook, hook this all up. So we're going to go ahead and cut this HX40 downpipe away. We're not going to show that. It is what it is. Cut it, get it out of your way. When, on the downpipe, we had talked about going ahead and installing our turbo and then lining up our downpipe and giving us, you know, giving us that much room. What I did was I actually rethought that and I went ahead and did it with the turbo off. So what I did was I, I mounted the turbo and I mocked it up and I realized the distance I needed. So as far as this downpipe goes in my truck configuration, the flange of the downpipe just about even with the foot of the turbo on the manifold was about where the downpipe needed to be and it, it, it'd fall in there just perfectly. So I went ahead and did that so the downpipe is in. We really haven't not shown you a specific part on that. Um, you, like I said, again, different trucks are going to be different configurations on this and fighting through the downpipe is uh, sometimes is, is the worst part of the job. So it's kind of one of those grab it and growl types of, type of deals. So. Now, with the exhaust manifold uh, and the ATS turbo configuration, so putting this ATS turbo on, we're going to be putting studs in all four, uh, all four spots on the manifold because we're using the ATS turbo. 
if you're putting the stock turbo back on here or could be some other configuration of turbo, you may only do two studs and then have to do, reuse your two bolts of the turbo that came out of it. Whatever that looks like, whatever came out of your manifold or out of your uh, out of your stock setup, that's where you're going to be. But if you're doing the ATS turbo like we are here, you're going to be putting all four studs uh, in the manifold because this is really nice setup and this is going to hang on the studs. And of course I dropped the last stud there, but we'll get it. So we're going to go ahead and throw that last stud in once I go down here and pick it up. Of course it fell in the motor mount, so that'll be a joy. But anyway fourth stud will go on there and then we're going to hang our turbo on so we're going to go ahead and set our turbo in now before you do your turbo what i would suggest for you to do is if you need to do any cleaning on the drain tube go ahead and do that or replace the drain tube uh, you can do that now as well so go ahead and set your gasket on studs just be ready for your turbo then be ready uh, with the nuts to catch it if you're doing it by yourself like i'm like i am we will go ahead and set the turbo in. There it is. So what I did there was I just went ahead and started my bottom two. And it was a little bit of a fight. So get a nut on it and then it's safe from falling off. Maybe one more for good measure. These are flange nuts, so. And as you're going along here, good idea to keep checking your alignment on your downpipe. And looks like we're gonna get there. Yeah, we'll get there. It'll be good. Then you want to make sure that you're not going to have, you know, rattle against your frame rail because that's another thing so aggravating in this. If you get all this done and then you got a downpipe rattling, what you've got to do is you've got to get the downpipe kicked away from the from the frame. So just very important to remember that. And yeah, that's it. So we're going to go ahead and get our uh, other nuts on and get our turbo situated. And we're going to leave everything loose just for right now. Make sure everything mocks up. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get our other nuts on. So what we've done now is we went ahead and we tightened up um, the turbo mounting bolts. I, I'm just going to be 100% honest here. The way this lays, it's just really not a good uh, position to get torque ratchets to. Tighten it up. It's got a gasket on it. You know, don't over tighten it. Don't, you know, that's easier said than done. But just, you know, tighten the bolts up. They, they are flange nuts uh, and they are knurled. So uh, they're not going to uh, back out or, or by design shouldn't. So, you know, we're ready to go ahead and start with the fit and finish here. I'm going to start with the drain tube because the drain tube is the part of the job that honestly for me is the most aggravating um, and, and we were talking about this off camera just a minute ago. Companies like ATS that have been around a long time, they've got these turbos uh, already spot on. You're not going to run into anything here that's going to be uh, something that you're going to run into that nobody's seen before. They've seen it. They've designed these turbos around it and, and that's another another thing with these companies that have been around a long time and been making turbos a long time that you're just not going to run into any hidden surprises. So when I do my drain tube, ATS sends you a new gasket. Go ahead and put the gasket on. And I like to start with my outside bolt and I'll put it in. I use a little bit of Loctite on my drain tube bolts. Uh, there are no instructions that tell you to do this and you know it might not be the right way for me. That's what I want. I, like I said, again, this is my vehicle. Uh, I want those uh, bolts on the drain tube to have a little bit of Loctite on them. Uh, that's, that's, just, uh, that's just my preference. So that's what I'm gonna do for my vehicle. And with your, out, your inside bolt lined up, your outside bolt should fall into place. And the gasket should be in place too. There we go. All right, so um, lightly torque this, I think uh, probably 89, 90 inch pounds on that. Tighten, they, tighten these two bolts up uh, for the oil drain tube. Downpipe time. 
show you what I like to do on this. I like to take my clamp fully apart on these, on the S300 styles, and I just hang it on the back of the turbo. And if you push it all the way to the back, it's out of the way of the downpipe and the flange, so you can go ahead and pull your downpipe up. So I've got some help underneath the truck, and we're just gonna twist the turbo, just twist the downpipe just a little bit more, David. Please we keep twisting, good right there. Right there. Yeah. Oh, we lost the camera, David. There we go, we're back. And then once the two flanges meet up, we just got to get our clamp on. So having the bolt off of the clamp gives you the kind of gives you the ability to do that uh, right there. And always good to have your 11 metric handy. Okay, then as it starts to tighten up, what we do is we want to make sure that we can still move the clamp and as the clamp's moving you can check to see that you are still on both of your flanges well, it looks like we're good to go there so we'll give it just a little bit more i want to loop, leave this loose because once um, we have everything done there i'll be looking for clearance uh, against the frame rail it looks pretty good are you off of it david yeah yeah okay all right good so there is tightening up your downpipe all right, lower elbow time. Now, uh, make sure that you've got your rubber O-ring gasket in here on your discharge side. I'll leave it loose at the coupler right there and then just make sure that you've got your O-ring in here and fits right up on the ATS unit. Just bring your band clamp up. And this band clamp here can actually be a little tricky too. That's the problem on the on the band clamps. You just as well as to just go ahead and take the nut off and be done with it most time. And once you got it caught, you can turn it to where you want it. And I'll put her about right there and tighten her up. Okay. Then don't forget to tighten this clamp down here because nothing messes up a brand new turbo install like going down the road for your first test drive and blowing an air cooler boot off. Oh, or breaking the breaking your clamp, which I did. Yeah, clamp broke. <laughs> and kids, that's why you don't use your impact when you're putting on clamps. And I know that. Look at that. That's why you don't do that. All right, so we're going to teach you how to prime this turbo. Uh, we suggest putting a little oil in it before you start up, just so the bearings and everything uh, are well lubricated. You want to check the fitting on the top of the turbo, make sure that it's tight as well. Uh, I just used, you know, 1540 oil here. I put a um, just a little uh, spout on it from Gear Oil, which makes it easy there. So fill the turbo up just like this and spin the front blade. It'll process a little bit of oil. Put just a little bit more in there. You can see as I spin it, the oil level will go down there. And I'll do it one more good time. That should have us primed up. We've got a little overzealous there. And hook our feed line back up. And that's a flat surface there. Make sure that you've got your O-ring fitting on the top of your thing. I like to just take that that flare nut back and push it back so I can actually see how that mates up and then tighten it down. Now when you're tightening this fitting, you want to three quarter inch wrench on the bottom and then a 13 16 on your fitting and just tighten it down. Now that line will move with it 
as you're working to uh, first start and you can just hold the line and turn it. Now if you loosen the other end of your oil feed line at the oil filter you want to go ahead and reattach it now same way. When you tighten this line there is an 11 16 fitting on the top side of the line itself so that you can hold the line and tighten, tighten the flare fitting at the same time. Right now it's being pretty good for us. So. All right, it's gonna let us tighten it down. But if it tries to turn on you, you put 11 16 right here. Thirteen sixteenths on the bottom, just like so, and tighten it down. All right, after we've got our oil line done, everything you want to make sure that's clean out of the face of the turbo, and then your final step before you put your air intake on is to tighten up the downpipe clamp. So we'll do that here real quick. All right, so now we are ready for our air intake. All right, we're going we're going to fire it up here and see what she do. We got our intake back on and everything and we are ready to go. We're going to watch for oil pressure to come up. That oil pressure is a little bit loud because we do not have the rest of the exhaust on. Uh -oh. What you want to do when you first fire up here is you're listening for sounds first off always, and then you're looking for leaks. Uh, that's the biggest thing here is to make sure that you do not have oil leaks, which we do not. We're good to go. It's on here. Looking good. All right, I'm gonna just goose it one time just to make sure we don't have any any housing contact or anything, which is a little bit. We got boost, fellas. All right, so what we'll do now is we will get our rest of our exhaust on and then we will kind of wrap this video up as an installation removal and installation of the turbo all right so right along with our ats aurora 3000 um, the first thing that really jumped out to me about this charger as compared to the charger that i had on the truck which was kind of a uh, a, a no-name uh, charger that was really just way too large for a vp44 fueling setup very crisp i can tell that this is going to be an awesome awesome towing turbo i'm really excited about that but so set up on this truck i've just got a smarty on it uh it can tunes out of the smarty uh 75 horsepower ddp injectors and now this ats aurora 3000 uh, i put a clean uh, brand new clean air filter on this to give this thing the best shake and i tell you what is um really another really nice feature of the turbo and just a driving style that i've come to do um, over the years is i'll drive this truck if i'm you know less than 2000 rpm a lot of times i'm in fourth gear instead of fifth uh, and that's just because of the lug that this truck got into with that bigger charger on it but with this aurora 3000 there's almost instant boost in it i mean it really is there's, there's almost instant boost i mean you just think about throttle and you're on boost uh, so I'm more apt now to go on into overdrive at that 50, you know, 50, 55 mile an hour speed limit with the gears in this truck. 60 mile an hour, this truck runs 1800 RPM in fifth gear. Um, but, you know, it just, you know, the truck in a lug are, you know, running, you know, 55, 60 mile an hour. We're running four or five pounds of boost right now. Uh, just running down the road, the truck, it just runs, seems like it runs cooler. Uh, we're going to back that up with an EG with some EGT numbers. We'll get that on. But what we wanted to really do today was 
uh, just ride along. Good boost in uh, low gears. Uh, another, uh, just another sizing uh, attribute of the Aurora 3000. If you're not, you know, over, uh, if you're not over fueled, you're going to have good, quick cleanup of the of the smoke. This truck now doesn't smoke at all, and it's, I mean, you know, that's a th that's third gear and just half throttle, and it's very, very peppy good low end power uh quick spool up so that's my takeaway on it on driving uh yeah i know everybody likes to pick on me about my tent on the windows i know it's uh it's uh it's turned purple on us it's about to come off so yeah but no the truck drives great really snappy uh i love it like that's a you know obviously second gear right there third gear no smoke 14 pounds of boost quarter throttle so tickled to death tickled to death so we're going to back all of this up now with our dyno run on this uh check that out and then this has been our installation video of the turbo the exhaust manifold the uh studs we did a lot with this one so and we're not done yet so keep watching